Hello, I'm Angela Sheedy and I'm here to give you an overview of Assessment 3 for HSC 318 Semester 2. This is a peer assessment report and it covers your learning outcomes 1, 2, 3 and 5. So make sure you go back and have a look at those. It's worth 30% of your overall marks and I've given the word count at around 1,000 words. This assignment is going to be due in on week 13 of semester on the Friday. So why is this assessment relevant? Well, reviewing your fellow health colleagues performance or written work is an important part of professional practice requiring a thoughtful and strategic approach. Within this assessment you're going to be presented with one of your fellow students project proposals to review and to provide feedback on. And this presents you the opportunity to explore other health program ideas, develop your skills in reviewing health documentation and provide some constructive feedback. And we've provided templates and so forth to help you with this process as well as some resources within the unit so you know how to get started in doing a peer review and peer assessment. In this assessment we are going to give you a project grant submission from, that's going to come from one of your fellow students, okay? And you may know, you may not know this student, but please remember that you are looking at another student's work and you need to treat it as private and confidential. This isn't something that you can be um, passing on to other people, okay? Um, so comments, what we want you to do is we've given you a template to fill out and we want you to review their grant proposal um, and provide some feedback and outline for this. So in each section we've outlined where we want you to comment and we want you to keep your comments fairly succinct, okay? So around 50 words or so. And when we are considering, so when you're reviewing your colleague's submission, what we want you to think about is their health program smart? You know, does it have, does it look to be overall something that's quite specific, it's measurable, it's achievable, realistic and timely? Is it going to meet the community's needs? Is it easy to read and understand? Do you kind of, have you got to the end of the proposal you can see exactly what they're after and what they're, they're saying that they want to achieve in their program? Um, and is the information relevant? Would it be a program you could envision actually working? So in preparation for this, you should have completed the study materials. And as I've said before, that I'll be providing some additional resources for this particular part of this assessment to give you a bit of a, a head start in, in what's anticipated when you go through your peer review. Um, we've also given you links again to that guide on writing grant applications so you can go back and have a little um, review of, of what's recommended. Uh, you might want to conduct some further research to help you with this. And of course, as you go through your um, the proposal that, that you're reading for your fellow student, you might find that you need to go back and also do a little bit of research to see if their ideas sound. So the mock grant peer review template is going to be provided to you and it is mandatory to you. So you have to use it for this assignment. And I've just outlined there the calibre or font that we're um, asking for you for use. And um, obviously try and stick to academic writing. Okay, so make sure that the feedback that you put down is succinct it's clear that we can understand exactly what it is you're trying to um, advise your fellow student of in, in your feedback purpose. Can you please make sure when you put your submission in that you save it as a Word document and title it um, with your name, your student number and HSC 318 assignment 3 or A3. It just makes it so much easier when we're going through and marking. Make sure you submit each separately. Um, the submission will allow for more than one submission if you do need to. Okay, so you might want to submit the um, student's work that you've also um, been reviewing as well with your submission. And please only submit Word documents, no PDF files. Okay, so how are you going to be marked for this? Well, you're going to be graded on your ability to provide sound feedback to a fellow student's project. And you will have received a rubric to demonstrate how your feedback will be assessed, okay? In having a look at how you're providing feedback for your fellow students project as well, remember that there is a rubric attached to assignment two that you can refer to. So you can see how we've been um, assessing other people's work. All peer reviews that you do are going to be moderated by a lecturer and they'll be also returned to the student whose work was reviewed for further feedback for them. Now, as I said before, all students' works to be treated as confidential and not to be used for any other purpose than for this assessment item in HSC 318. 
So the peer review template looks like this. So we basically, you've got the same type of grant submission template, but there's just been a few little bits added and a few bits taken away. So we need you to put down your own details as of the person conducting the peer review. Okay, and again, I've asked you guys to identify which course code you're in. And that's relevant because it gives some context to what you're actually reviewing there. For example, I might be a health science student and I'm peer reviewing work by a midwifery student. So I can see then that the work that I'm reviewing by this midwifery student is actually quite well aligned to what their course goals would be. Okay, so it might be more focused on um, infant and mother care and so forth and that type of program. And so, as I said, it just helps us to be able to contextualise a little bit more. We've got their um, grant finance request, so you need to nominate their what um, the person whose who's work you're peer reviewing, which one did they ask for, a six month or a 12 month program grant? And um, did you think that that was appropriate, yes or no? And if it was no, why do you think it was appropriate? Do you think they needed to ask for more or do you think it was needed to be less and if so why. This part here is just about confidentiality. Again um, I'm very mindful that you're going to be working with someone else's uh, grant application so I want you guys to remember that it's, it is someone else's work and to treat it with respect and not share it around and just your submission, um, submission instructions there. And finally this sort of sits up high in, in the form and as we go into the next screen you'll see where you actually provide more of your feedback. But we've asked you here, would you pass the grant submission so this project could go to the next stage of being developed? Yes or no? And if no, please provide at least one reason as to, to why you can't see that this project, this program, sorry, would be successful and move forward. So you'll see that this grant submission template is exactly the same areas as to what you filled out. And what we've done is we've basically leave, left um, some of the details there. So as a prompt for you to be seeing, um, has the person actually completed that in their grant proposal? For example, the target group, that it should have been around 100 words and tell us who the project is targeted at. Have they? Um, so that's just a prop there for you as a peer reviewer to see if they've actually met that. So the rubric that we've outlined here is a rubric that we're going to be using to mark you on your peer feedback process. So once you've submitted your, um, your peer review to the fellow students whose project that you've been asked to peer review, we will then be looking at how you've responded in each area towards your fellow students work and marking you on that. Okay, so we've broken the rubric up so you can see where your marks are going to be allocated. The first one is that you're providing meaningful and accurate feedback on your program submission and it demonstrates understanding of the requirements for the grant peer review template provided and completing all areas. So I guess there's a few areas there. One, that you've provided feedback in each area of the um, submission template. Obviously, if you got a student's peer review and they missed an area of the peer grant, that would be something you'd be feeding back, you know, that um, it was noticed that you haven't submitted any information for your health program in this section of the grant application and that this is, you know, important because. Uh, so we're asking you to do that part. We're asking that um, your feedback demonstrates that you understand what each part of that submission template is required for so you understand what should be in the target group information, what should be in um, an executive summary and so forth uh, and that your feedback overall is meaningful and accurate, okay, which means that if they've done a poor job in identifying their target group, you haven't um, and, and you've given feedback that uh, you thought that their target group was very well outlined and so forth and it's fairly obvious to us that they haven't provided enough detail and there's more information required there, that's where we'll be giving you feedback within the rubric, okay, within this area. Um, of course, always aim for the excellent column as you review your rubric. Your rubric. In the second part um, of this rubric, we're going to be marking you on the fact that you've been able to identify strengths and or weaknesses in the program proposed for the mock grant submission. So in reading um, your fellow students' program proposal, you can show them where they you feel that their programs 
looks really good um, and where it may be not so good and where they um, and being constructive with that feedback so not just saying um, you didn't do very well you didn't do a very good outline of the target group may identifying what they could have included to make that a better outline in this part of the rubric we want you to actually provide feedback on their referencing so you'll see the section that's been created in the template for you to use there so yeah this means you have to have a look at your fellow students referencing style uh, have they used really good sources um, would there be a reference there that's missing that you felt should have been used or, or if that might be part of your feedback process as a recommendation that it would have been good to bring this health organization in for example um, and that would be um, identified in, in acknowledgement of their sources and so forth as well. It might mean that they've mentioned um, health organisations within as stakeholders, for example, in, in their pro program, uh, but they haven't included that on their reference list. And those sorts of things should always be included in all the reference list. So for us who are reviewing it, if we want to find out more about that organisation or we want to read that journal article, we know where we can go and find it. The second part that I've identified here is uh, you provide feedback on your fellow students' written work. So are you able, are their sentence structure good? Have they got good grammar? Is their spelling good? Okay, um, is their flow of information? Make it easier to read through. So that is this section that you are able to coherently provide feedback for your student regarding that. Um, the very last section here is the feedback provided by peer reviewer demonstrates clear direction for the reader with good academic writing skills, grammar and sentence structure. So this is where your actual writing of the peer review is being um, assessed to make sure that you as the peer review person have actually got good written expression and you've minded your spelling and it's got um, a good flow of information through each, each area. Not sure how to get started? Well, if you watch this outline and still don't know how to get started, contact a unit coordinator to ask, okay? And you can find my details in the unit information there. But basically remember, what we're asking you to do is to review your fellow students' work. So you're gonna have the opportunity to have a look at someone else's grant proposal and read through it and provide them with feedback, okay? And we're giving you a template to complete as that part of that feedback process. And then there is a rubric that I'll be using to assess your feedback um, abilities and how well you've done in your peer review process. And please go in the unit where we've put additional resources for you um, and some tips on how to get started and, and how to conduct a good peer review. So hopefully you'll enjoy this opportunity. Okay, thank you.